Hello everyone, a very good morning and a warm greetings from Nepal. First of all, I would like to thank the organizing committee of Third World Conference on SIF for giving me this opportunity to present a presentation. My name is Meera Prajapati. I did my PhD from Lanzhou Veterinary Research Institute in China in 2020. At present, I'm working as a scientist in National Animal Health Research Center under Nepal Agricultural Research Council. Today, I'm going to present on utilization of cellular receptor SLAM or CD150 for the detection of pesticides, petis ruminant virus. This was a part of my PhD thesis. The overview of presentation consists of background information, origin and spread of PPR, justification of the study, development of CD150 or SLAM-based ELISA, conclusions and acknowledgements. Okay, let me start with the introduction. Pestidis petis ruminans is a highly contagious transboundary animal disease characterized by fever, stomatitis, conjunctivitis, gastroenteritis, and pneumonia. This disease is caused by PPR virus, which is a negative sense RNA virus belonging to the genus Morbillivirus of the family Paramyxophyte. The major host animals are sheep and goats. However, the virus has been found to infect cattle, buffalo, pig, and camel subclinically without playing any role in virus transmission. The virus possesses six structural proteins and two non-structural proteins. Hemagglutinin and fusion proteins are the surface proteins embedded in the envelope. Matrix proteins is found below the envelope, which serves as a link between outer envelope and the ribonucleoprotein complex. Nucleoprotein, phosphoprotein, and large protein constitute a nucleocapsid, which encloses the final RNA. B and C proteins are the two non structural proteins of this virus. The length of virus genome is 15,948 nucleotides long and the size ranges between 400 and 500 nanometer. The genes are placed in the order of 3' NP MFHL5'. The presence of on translated region at the 3' end of both genomic and antigenomic RNA serves as promoter. Let's look at the origin and spread of PPR. PPR was first reported in the Ivory Coast of West Africa in 1942. Then the disease started to spread in neighboring African countries like Nigeria, Senegal, and Ghana. By 1980s, the disease spread to other countries of Central and Eastern Africa and even the parts of Asia, including Nepal, India, Bangladesh, and Pakistan. In 2007, this disease was reported in 39 countries, which increased to 43 countries in 2013. And now this disease is present over 70 countries across the world. The most important thing is it has reached the Europe do doorsteps with cases reported in Georgia and Turkey. So why this study is necessary? It is clear that the disease is spreading massively across the world, affecting the productivity and production from animals, causing huge loss. The total economic loss has been estimated up to 2.1 billion US dollar. Therefore, OIE and FAO has said global eradication strategy by the year 2030. And for the control and eradication of disease, effective diagnostic methods and surveillance of disease plays important role. So far, many diagnostic methods are available for the diagnosis of PPR. They are agarjal immune diffusion test, counterimmune electrophoresis, polymerase chain reaction, immunofluorescence antibody test, virus neutralizing test, monoclonal antibody based C ELISA and indirect ELISA. However, these diagnostic methods are not applicable all the time and anywhere. They have both benefits 
and drawbacks. Nucleic acid amplification methods are highly sensitive, but it is very expensive and requires special equipment to operate. Similarly, ELISA kits is very expensive and it has low sensitivity. Virus isolation methods need high operating costs and there are issues of quality assurance and even it needs trained scientists and suitable facilities to operate. Similarly, immunochromatographic or magnetic bead format tests are simple, but it is not available in developing world. Agarjal immunodiffusion test is not highly sensitive to identify animals infected with the PPR virus. Therefore, this study was focused mainly on development of ELISA using SLAM or CD150 as a capsule ligand. Till now, no any diagnostic method has been developed using CD150 based ELISA. Uh, on the ELISA till develop are uh, uses only the viral proteins, but in this ELISA, we use viral cellular receptor SLAM for the development of ELISA, which is a novel. After this brief background, let's talk in detail about the development of SLAM or CG150 based ELISA. Before we talk about SLAM based ELISA, we need to know what is CD150 or SLAM. CD150 is also known as SLAM, which stands for Signaling Lymphocyte Activation Molecule. It consists of 207 amino acids, an extracellular domain with two immunoglobulin-like domains, a 21 amino acid transmembrane segment, and a 77 amino acid cytoplasmic domain with three uh, with three tyrosine-based motifs. The extracellular domain consists of B domain and C2 domain, and the intracellular domain consists of three tyrosine-based motifs. So this SLAM is a major cellular receptor of morbidly viruses, including PPRV. In case of human, only human CD150 B domain is sufficient to interact with the measles virus H protein. The Caprian SLAM was found to share a high degree of homology with SIP SLAM 96.8%, followed by cattle 93.5%, buffalo, dog, and human SLAM. So in materials and methods, the cells and viruses we used are African green monkey kidney cells, which is known as paro cells, and uh, we use the vaccine strain of PPRV Nigeria 70.1. Once the PPRV Nigeria 75.1 strain vaccine virus was grown in paro cells, when the cells sold greater than 80% CPE, that is cytopathic effect, virus was harvested by freezing and thawing for three times and DCID50 was calculated using read and Mune's method. The extracellular domain of goat slam gene was synthesized successfully and cloned into paid sumo vector via BAM-HI and XOI restriction enzyme. This part was done by Wuhan Gene Create Biological Engineering Company Limited in China. The recombinant expressed protein was analyzed by STS space and Western blood, and then PPRV antisera was prepared. For preparing PPRV antisera, we immunized the PPRV free seed for three times at two weeks interval, and the serum was collected, which was used as polyclonal antibody for the assay. After preparing all these necessary things for ELISA, we started to optimize coating buffer, blocking buffer, and recombinant slab. After the assay was optimized, a total of 136 samples of SIP were collected. Out of 136 samples, 120 samples were collected from slaughterhouses of Kansu province and 16 positive samples were collected from PPR infected sick during post-mortem examination. These samples were confirmed as true positive and true negative by RT2PCR test. After that, these samples were used for the determination of cutoff value, specificity, 
and sensitivity of the essay. This graph shows the results of two PCR tests of negative samples and positive samples. This figure A and B represents the uh, results of positive tissue samples and this figure C and D represents the uh, results of negative samples. Now let's look at the results. So here we first confirm the recombinant protein expressed by the E. coli expression system has the correct molecular weight by STS space and Western blot. Next, the optimization of protein buffer, blocking buffer, and recombinant SLAM was carried out. For the coating buffer, two coating buffer, TBSCM, TBSCM buffer having pH value 7.6 and sodium salt buffer having pH value 9.6 were used. And the results of P by N, P by N, so that TBSM buffer gave higher P by N value at different concentration of SLAM than the sodium salt buffer. Therefore, TBS buffer was selected for this ELISA. As for the blocking buffer, we use 5% skim milk powder, 1% casing, and TBS plus 2% NBS. And the results of P by N showed that 1% 1 1 casing gave higher P by N value than other blo blocking buffer, 5% skim milk buffer and TBS plus 2% NBS. Therefore, we choose 1% casing uh, as a blocking buffer for this assay. Next, for the optimization of SLAM, the ELISA plates were coated with different concentration of SLAM and incubated overnight at 4 degrees Celsius. And the next day, ELISA was carried out. The results of PYN value showed that 0.39 nanogram per well is better for this ELISA. Once the parameters of ELISA were optimized and standardized, samples of known status were used to estimate cutoff value of the assay. The results were expressed as the ratio of the mean OD value of the samples <clears throat> and the mean OD value of the negative control samples. Altogether, 120 known negative samples and 16 known positive samples were used for the determination of the cutoff value. The cutoff value was set at the SN ratio of 2 because all the positive samples were tested positive and negative samples were tested negative when this cutoff value was chosen. Evaluation of the specificity of the ELISA was done by cross detection of other viruses which infect epithelium or mucus in sheep and goat. We tested for ORF virus, FMG virus of strain O and A, sheepox virus and goatpox virus. And no any cross reaction was observed uh, indicating that the assay was specific for PPRV. For the analytical sensitivity, the analytical sensitivity of the assay was carried out by testing serial dilutions of PPRV ranging from 0.5 into 10 to the power 3 to 1.9 into 10 to the power 0 in replicates. As shown in this table, the dynamic detection range of the assay spans from 0.5 to 1.5625 into 10 uh, TCID 50 per 50 microliter with a detection limit at 1 in 32 ratio. Then we compared PPRV SLAM I ELISA with RTQPCR and sandwich ELISA. For that, a total of 136 samples were tested simultaneously by PPRV SLAM I ELISA and RTQPCR and sandwich ELISA. 15 samples 
were determined to be positive by PPRV slam ionizer. While 16 samples were determined as positive by RTQPCR and sandwich ELISA. And uh, 121 samples were determined as negative by SLAM, PPRV SLAM I ELISA, whereas 120 samples were detected as negative by RTQPCR and sandwich ELISA. So these data were used for the determination of sensitivity and specificity of the assay. And the relative sensitivity and specificity of PPRV I slime ELISA for the detection of PPRV antigen were estimated to be 93.75% and 100.83% respectively when compared with commercially available sinus ELISA and RTQPCR. So in conclusion, we successfully developed recombinant goat slam based indirect ELISA for the detection of PPRV. The sensitivity of the assay was found to be 93.75% and specificity was found to be 100.83% in comparison with RTQPCR and sinus ELISA. This test should further be evaluated using different types of clinical samples. And this, has been this work has been published in Frontiers in Pregnant Science. So in summary, uh, this uh, study successfully developed novel diagnostic tool using SLAM or CD150 for the detection of PPRV, which is believed to play a vital role in controlling and preventing the disease. So at last, I would like to acknowledge Chinese Government Scholarship Council and LVRI Lanzhou. Special thanks goes to my advice, my supervisor, Professor Chidong Chang, Professor Yan Mingli, Dr. Yong Si Dong, Dr. Xiang Ping Yin, and all the viral grazing animal team. For, I am also thankful to the National Key Research and Development Program of China, CAS Innovation Fund, and CAS International Cooperative Fund for providing the fund for this project. And last but not the least, vote of thanks goes to State Key Laboratory of Veterinary Etiology and Biology. Thank you. Thank you very much.